If you're watching this video, it's probably because you want to avoid fuzzy edges, grain, and washed out colors in your photos and videos. Now, we're talking about the ISO, which is also known as the exposure of your camera. So, ISO is a setting that controls the sensitivity of light in your image. So, the ISO is different from the other two settings that we talked about, which was the shutter speed and the aperture of your camera. Those two are mechanical. The ISO is digital enhancement. Now, what does that exactly mean? It means that it's not allowing more light into your camera. It's boosting the light in your image, which is going to result in a lower quality final product. The more you brighten your image this way, the more susceptible it is to image quality loss and things like grain, fuzzy edges, and that's not what we want. So on a typical shoot with all of your other settings constant, we're gonna try and keep the ISO as low as we possibly can. This is to preserve the colors and the image quality overall to be the most natural to the camera and the way that is captured. You really wanna keep control of your dynamic range. And the dynamic range is the intensity of light from the shadows all the way up to the highlights. Now, the best way to keep track of this is your histogram. Your histogram is your scale of light. You wanna keep an eye on both ends of this scale because if you're too far on either side of that scale, you're gonna have data loss. If there's crowding on either side, not only are you losing quality, you're actually losing information of your image. Once that's gone, you can't get it back. I've learned this the hard way many times. Now, sometimes there just isn't enough light to work with. So let's talk about the low end of the scale, which is your shadows, your darks, and underexposing your image. I started my career in nightclubs and at festivals, so I was working in low light all the time. And I had to learn the hard way that I was underexposing a lot of my footage. Underexposing is when you don't have enough light in your image and you either just can't get that back, or if you try to get it back, your image is just gonna be completely grainy and lose saturation. Underexposing your image is going to lose all data in the darkest parts of your image so your shadows and your black and if you lose that information you're not going to have any sort of texture or information and you're not really going to be able to see anything because there's just going to be too much contrast overall so nighttime and low light scenarios are very difficult to shoot in for the most part in my experience most cameras aren't gonna go past 1600 ISO. Low light is where we're gonna have to start applying our ISO rules. So let's bring up the scale real quick. Every time we double our ISO, we are doubling the brightness of the image, which means we are that much closer to losing our image completely. The more you increase the ISO, the more artificial light you're adding and the less saturation and image quality you are going to sustain. For most cameras, that point is gonna be at 1600 ISO. So if you start shooting at 3200, 6400 and above, you are going to get an extreme amount of grain. I shoot on Sony's just because of their low light capabilities. Now let's talk about the opposite end of the spectrum because it is equally as important. As much as you don't want to underexpose your image, you definitely don't want to overexpose your image. And believe it or not, you can do that in low light scenarios. If you're bringing your ISO up too much, you might be clipping all of the highlights in your image. This is more commonly seen during daytime footage. During the day, you're gonna be combating the light from the sun. This is mainly gonna pose an issue if you have a selected aperture and shutter speed already because we wanna keep our ISO as low as possible. Now, we want to keep these as well because if you're clipping your highlights and you're just going to get white blotches in your image, this typically happens with the sky or sometimes on skin tone and you can't get that information back either. There's gonna be no texture, no color and no detail in it. I've learned this the hard way through daytime shoots that if you overexpose your image, you are also losing all the quality in it in terms of sharpness and color, the same way that you would by increasing your ISO too much. The best way to combat this is a neutral density filter, which pretty much just blocks out the light. So if we have underexposing, we want to get rid of that mechanically first before we touch our ISO. So that would mean opening up your aperture and your shutter speed as much as you can and getting as much light in before touching your ISO. But if you have your f-stop set at a specific rate and your shutter speed is already at double, there's not much else you can do but raise your ISO. And that's when we're gonna wanna use it. But for the most part, I try to keep mine as low as possible at all times unless I'm complying 
with a specific picture profile. So pretty much just keep your ISO as low as possible when you can. And during the daytime, obviously we're not gonna wanna bring up our ISO because there's gonna be an excess of light to begin with. If we have bunching on that side of the histogram, we're gonna have to rely on other things such as our shutter speed, our aperture, or things like neutral density filters to block out that extra light that we have or else we're gonna lose our image. Now, since the majority of cameras aren't designed for low light, let me give you three tips on how we can get more brightness in our image without touching our eyes. So the first way, and probably one of the most important, is a picture profile or a creative style on your camera. Now, you just got your camera, you're crazy excited, you wanna go out and shoot, I've been there, but you go out and you shoot all this footage not realizing that you cannot change it once you've shot it. There is not a lot of flexibility in the standard profile that you are shooting in. So the colors that you see are the colors that you're going to get. Now, that poses one problem in post-production with matching footage, but there's also another benefit that I just didn't realize for the longest time. The benefits of having these creative and picture profiles is that you have more flexibility in your image overall. So when you think about that, you're capturing more data because there's less saturation, less highlights, and less shadows. But that means now you have more flexibility to pull down the highlights and to bring up the shadows without destroying your image. Now that you have more control over your dynamic range, you are actually able to shoot in darker scenarios and get more information out of it. Where before, in your basic settings, it's gonna be over contrasted. So despite the undesirable look of most picture profiles, you are actually saving so much information in your camera that is gonna help you out later in post-production when you want to match colors of shots or just get a better dynamic range, which is going to save the colors and give you just a way better overall quality of your image. You will be preserving what your camera works so hard to get. So the second tip might seem obvious, but it took me a while to figure this out. We're all carrying our phones on us at all times and we never stop to think that there's a light on our phone. Now, it may not seem like a phone light may do much, but I just wanna show you one example right here. So not everybody has lights set up like this to give a nice studio look. Sometimes you are just out on the streets and you just don't have enough light coming from the street lamps or the moon. So what you wanna do is use an external light, even just your phone. And I'm gonna show you the power of that right now. We are at the same ISO that we've been at the entire shoot and it might seem obvious that this light is illuminating me but what you don't realize is that this little light is casting bits of light everywhere. So as we start to raise our ISO we can capture a little bit more light everywhere. So we still get a bit more out of our image with just a small light. Same thing with a laptop. It's extremely dark now but once we have this external light, which isn't that bright, we can pull so much more just because there is some light to work with. As long as there's something to work with, it will give a better image than if we were to have no lights at all. And now the third and most basic tip for this is going to be controlling those other settings on your camera, which we've kind of touched on. But remember, the aperture and the shutter speed are mechanical and they are actually letting in more light into your camera. It is not a digital enhancement like the ISO. They are actually letting in authentic light, which is not going to compromise your image if you control it properly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn to those settings. But if you have them set at a very specific point, you're going to have to either use these lights or adjust your ISO. Now that we've gotten past those tips, I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice. These are tips that I use personally and I've been using for my entire career. And I know they sound kind of absurd, kind of crazy. And some of this information sounds too good to be true or just illogical. When I'm shooting in some specific picture profiles, I can bring the ISO up on my camera to over 25,000. Let me show you a couple of examples of this right now. So as you can see, there's still light in this image in this very dark area, and we are not compromising the image that much. This looks way better than most cameras at 3200 ISO. And now one more thing that I have used when I desperately needed light was I would match my shutter speed down to the frame rate that I'm shooting at. So if I was shooting at 24 frames, I would bring it down to 125th. 
per second, or if I was shooting in 60 frames, I would bring it down to 1 60th. We can record with a matching frame rate and not lose the quality. I can't explain the exact science behind this, but you can try it out yourself. I've been using it for the last two years and it is giving me one extra stop of light. And that's how I get away with very dark scenario. Thank you for watching this part of the series and make sure to check out the other videos if you want to master light and using your camera to its full potential. Now remember, there is always going to be more tips and information, so feel free to subscribe to me if it's right here or if it's like right here. I haven't decided where I'm gonna put it yet. And uh, thanks for watching again, and I will see you soon. Ugh.